Praise God, Lord Jesus, bless the eyes and ears of the listeners in the name of Jesus. And I plead the blood of Jesus on this. Just like Jesus kept saying in the Bible, let him that has ears listen and understand. Understand. Okay, understand this, y'all. Go to Revelation chapter 11. Uh, and my shirts came in. I got my God Wants Doer t-shirts. And yours should be coming in this week. For those that bought one. Uh, Revelation 11 talks about the temple will be restored. Restored in, the, in these days. Right here. The days we're in. But I want you to go to Revelation 12. I'm sorry. 12. 7 through 11. And a war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. Okay? There's a war coming. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Okay? So the, so the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil Satan, who deceives the whole world. Okay? He's a deceiver. He was cast to the earth. So where is he right now? He's up in the heavenly places. Okay. And his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now strength and salvation and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brothers who accused them before God day and night has been cast down because where is Satan now? He's before God accusing you every day and night. God, you see what so-and-so is doing? Lizzie, so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. That's where he's at right now. But he's going to get cast down to earth, okay? And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death, okay? Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows his time is short. All right, I want you to go on over to, I'll oh, keep going to 13. Now, when the dragon saw that he had been cast down to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child, which is Israel. Okay, talking about Jesus. But the woman was given two wings of an eagle, America. Okay, that she might fly into the wilderness in her place. We will protect, we're her allies. Okay, where she is nourished for Time and times and a half a time, three and a half years, okay, from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent has come down, having great wrath, and he's very upset because this is Israel is where Jesus come from. He's going to he's trying to wipe them off the map. He doesn't want them here for three and a half years, and America is protecting Israel, okay. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might. Caused her to be carried away by the flood, but the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened his mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon has spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, who was who? Israel. And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So he's mad at her. He's going to make war with the saints, her offspring, the saints. Okay, Jesus is the child, okay, that was born in Israel, but the offspring, okay, uh, is, the, is the saints, and he's coming to make war with us, okay, we're having great wrath, great wrath, the Bible says, okay, and uh, it goes on to tell you in 13 about the beast of the sea rising, we can go down. To uh, thirteen nine. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. So, anybody that leads you into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Okay? The saints are going to be tested. There's no way out of it. You're not going to get blinked out of here in the next five seconds. Well, you could... You could, if the Antichrist reveals himself in the next four seconds, you could. But you're not going to get, we're going to go through some stuff. And it keeps telling you over and over, three and a half years, three and a half years. Um, that don't say anything until you finish reading the Bible. Reading the Bible. 
Okay, you might not like what I'm saying, but hey, I'm not saying it. It's God's word, the word of God. So go read it. Read it. As plain as it can be. You know, there's not one, no, nothing in here that tells you we're going to get blinked out of here any second. Nothing. Nothing. Zilch. Nada. Nothing. Nothing. But I'm going to tell you how it is. And Jesus showed me this about three months ago because I believed I was going to get blinked out of here any second. And Jesus said they've been believing that for 2,000 years and that hasn't happened. You know why? Because he said, I tell you in my word when to look up, okay, for, for that to happen, the being caught up, the gathered together, okay, the rapture, okay. Go on to uh, okay, Revelation 14. Verses 14 through 16. <clears throat> then I looked and beheld a white cloud, and on the cloud one, sat, one um, sat one like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hands a sharp sickle. This is when the reaping starts taking place, the rapture. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice in that sat on the cloud, Thrust your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle of the earth, and the earth was reaped. Okay. Well, let's go on. I want you to go over to, go back to Daniel chapter 7. Flip your Bibles. Write these verses down and go study yourself. Anywhere you look in the Bible that talks about the rapture, Jesus tells you this in every single book. Every book, every one of them. Go to Daniel, chapter 7, verses 21. All right, he comes up. I'm going to start in verse 21 anyway. Um, I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the who? The saints. If we're raptured out of here, there certainly ain't no saints left behind. I can tell you that. But he's making war with the saints, and he's prevailing against them. Okay, until the ancient days of, until the ancient of days came, and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High, and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. Okay, so he's going to do this, persecute us, and but Jesus changed that and said we're going to give them. Cut the days in short because so we can possess the kingdom. Until the Ancient of Days came, which is Jesus, and a judgment was made in favor of us, the saints of the Most High, and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. And then he goes on into talking about this, said, uh, this he said, uh, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom of the earth. We're going to go through the beasts and stuff. Now, I want you to read that. Go ahead and read 23, 24, talking about who the ten horns are and stuff. And go on down to 25. He, he's still talking about the beast. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High. That's us. We're going to get some persecution, okay? That's the Bible. And shall intend to change times and laws. Then the saints shall be given into his hand, to, not his hand, into his hand. I'm getting confused when my fingers are going. Then the saints shall be given into the hands of the beast for a time and times and a half a time, three and a half years. The saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and a half a time. But the court shall be seated and they shall take away his dominion, which is what we do. To consume and destroy it forever. Then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. So it tells you again, we're going to go through time, times and a half a time of persecution. Under who? The beast. And then, it keeps saying, and then, and then we reap our kingdom. He reaps his harvest. Then, and then, and then. All right, let's go over to... Uh... Let's go to Matthew. Turn your Bibles to Matthew. I don't care where you're looking in the Bible. This is what you're going to hear. This is what it is. Matthew 24. Turn to Matthew 24. 
verse 3. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him saying, I tell us, when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus said, take heed that nobody deceives you. Don't let nobody tell you you're going to get blinked out here any second. Not going to happen. For many will come in my name saying I am the Christ and it will deceive very, very many and with lies too. And you will hear, you, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled. All these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places that you will see. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation. You, okay? And kill you, okay? And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, will hate one another. The many false prophets will rise up and will deceive many by the multitude. And I see it on here all the time, all the time with their own made up doctrines and stuff. I see it, y'all. People believe it. Well, argue in the comment section when it's what they're saying is not in God's word. Read the word. Before you want to argue a point, read the word. Okay. All right, uh, and, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. That's the falling away, okay? But he who endures to the end shall be saved, and this gospel will be preached um, all the world as a witness for all nations, and then the end will come. But therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken about Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, let him who reads understand that means he really wants you to understand this. Then those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who are on the housetop not go down and take anything out of his house. Let him who is in the field not go back. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight not be in winter on the Sabbath. I'm going to stop right there. Woe to those who are pregnant and who are nursing babies in those days. Why? Because if you're an unsaved mother... And your baby, your innocent baby is going to go to heaven. When the rapture happens, gone. Could you imagine? You don't know Jesus and you're sitting there feeding your baby and it just disappears from your arms. That's why. So woe to you that are given suck in those days. Okay, where are we at? Uh, 22. And, um, I mean, 21. For then, for then there will be great tribulation as never been since the beginning of time, nor never will be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, it's not the 144,000 Jews, it's you. He keeps telling you in every scripture, it's you. You will be here. You will see this. You will experience this for three and a half years. You, 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 you. And it will not come, will not come, the gathering up until the man, the man of sin is revealed. Abomination of desolation. That's Bible. That's Bible. Okay, it took Jesus Christ to show me this, literally, him, literally. Okay, uh, but if those days were not shortened, nobody would survive it, nobody, especially not us, the elect. Okay, so he goes on, if anyone says, look there, look here, look there, no, no, no. He comes as lightning, <laughs> gonna be quick, <laughs> boom, you can read that on in, uh, we're still in 24, you can read that on in 27, for his lightning shines from this way, that way, boom, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. That's how fast it's going to be. But he just told you in the same verse that you're going to see the abomination of desolation, that you will get some persecution. That's Bible. That's from the words of Jesus. All right, let's go over. Let's, let's, let's prove some more. Let's go do, do more. Because you need to know that you've been lied to by a lot of people, and you believed it. For 2,000 years, they believed a lie. All right, let's go to, um, but that day and hour, no one knows. We do know the man of sin is going to be revealed. We know that. Will it be the day after that? We don't know. He just said, when you see that, any second, any time, and he wants you to know the seasons. He wants you to know the seasons. Because Luke 12, verse 54 and 56, tells you to discern the times that you're living in. You need to be aware. Okay, let's go to Mark 13, Mark chapter 13, I'm trying to fly through this. I'm so tired of people being led astray and arguing about something that's not even in the Bible, not in the Bible. 
Okay, this is getting caught up out of here, blinked out of here any second. It's not biblical. Nowhere in the Bible does it say it. Nowhere. Nowhere. It says you will see the man of sin first. And it says three and a half years of tribulation the saints will go through. Then we're out of here. Then the last three and a half years of the God-awful tribulation, we're not here for that. God's wrath. But we are here until the man of sin is revealed. How much plainer does Jesus need to tell it to you? How much plainer does he need to speak it to you? Then can, can, can't people just read his word and understand? That's what he kept saying. Understand this. Understand this. He's saying it to you. And he means it. Because he knows, obviously, he's seen the future that people won't go understand it. But it is what it is. He's showing me. And I understand it plainly. Because it's his word. His word's not confusing. Okay. Let's go to uh, Mark chapter 13, verse 3 through 23. I'm going to let you read through that. That's a lot to work. Now he's, they, they want to know the signs and the times of his coming. And he's telling them, take heed that no one deceives you. Many's going to come in his name. Um, watch for yourselves. They will deliver you up to councils. And this is verse 9. And you will be beaten in synagogues. You will be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony of them. If you're not here, if it, it's about you for a testimony of him. So if we're already caught up and out of here, there is nobody here for a testimony of him. You will be here for this, okay? And the gospel will be preached to all nations, but when they arrest you and deliver you up, don't worry, he said, or, or try to premeditate what you'll speak because whatever is given to you in that hour, speak that, for it is not you who speaks but the Holy Spirit. So he, his spirit is still working here. Okay, when the rapture happens, he removes his spirit from Jesus. When the rapture happens, Jesus removes his spirit from the earth. Okay, but he just told you in Mark chapter 13, verse 11, pay attention, let him who have understanding hear the word of God. But when they arrest you and deliver you up, do not worry about what you're going to say or what you're going to speak. But whatever is given to you in that hour, speak that. Speak whatever you feel in that hour when that happens. Because it's not you who speaks, but the Holy Spirit who's going to speak through you. When you are getting persecuted and they bring you up to persecution, he will speak to you. So, are the Christians gone yet? No. He just said this Holy Spirit will work through you. We're still here, people. We're here. That's Bible. Okay? And his brother will betray brother to death. And father his child, and children will raise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Not to the end of the seven years, through the first three and a half years till he comes. Okay? And I just read you, and when he said in Daniel, you will be unpersecuted for three and a half years. Time, times, and a half time. And he said in Revelation, times, time, and a half time. Okay, and then he tells you, who's doing the persecution? The beast, the Antichrist. Then he tells you, Matthew, Mark, Thessalonians, all the rest, that he will come to gather his children after the Antichrist is revealed. Okay, after the Antichrist is revealed, don't know when in that three and a half years he's going to be revealed. Don't know. It might be that we might have to go through a month of tribulation. I don't know how much tribulation we'll go through. But it says three and a half years under the reign of the Antichrist. We will be here. That's Bible. There's nothing else in the Bible that says anything any different. So God really wants you go study this yourself. God wants you to understand. And he keeps saying it. Those are very important verses where he keeps saying, let the reader understand. Jesus is saying, pay attention. Understand this. You're going to go through some. And then you can go on and find out that we have to go through a little bit of purification. Yes, we accept Jesus in our heart. But to get in the kingdom of heaven, it's, where's the scripture at? You're going to have to go through a little bit of, a little bit of purification. And that is... Um, uh, oh, I don't remember where it is. I have to look it up and I'll put it in the comment section. But um, I'll find it for you. So either way, I mean, the Bible's the Bible. It's the word. You know, and that's what Jesus told me. When he brought this to my attention about three months ago, I was a pre-tribber. Because that's what I've been raised in church to believe. And that's what I believe. And I'd argue blue in the face with you if you told me anything different. But 
When Jesus said, read my, find it, find it in my word where I told you I will come and gather you up or catch you out of here before the man of sin is revealed. You can't find it because it's not in his word. Jesus' word, he don't lie and his word don't change. So he told you straight up, straight up. I just showed you four or five times, maybe six, I don't know, that we're going to be here for that. And he told you a time frame, three and a half years, a time frame. Okay, and go read it. Go read it yourself. And uh, go read it for yourself. I got the wrong notebook here. Oh, there's so much to read, y'all. But go study it. I mean, it can't be any plainer, any plainer than that. It is what it is. That's the reason why your great, 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 great grandparents who thought they were going to get blinked out of here before they died didn't. That's why your parents didn't. That's why you're still here. Because the man of sin has not been revealed yet. So the time that Jesus is talking about has not happened yet. But it's coming. We are in that time frame now for it to happen any second. Okay? So yeah, get ready. Be ready. You, But, but forget about it. So what if, you know, if, if, what if the rapture was to happen in three more years? Does that, should you get discouraged? No, because you as an individual might lose your breath and die in the next second. Now that's real. That's real. You might die in the next second. Where are you going to go? You're not guaranteed to stay alive until the Antichrist is revealed. You're not guaranteed that. But if you are alive, you ain't going to see the return of Jesus until that happens because that's Bible. That's Bible. Okay, and that Jesus showed me that he told me I was wrong. And he said, if he's got me on here teaching you people, I have to he has to clarify stuff that's been taught wrong through the generations in order for me to get on here and teach it to you. Okay, and everything you've been hearing about getting caught up out of here before that happens is a, a deceiving lie from Satan. I don't care who said it. I don't care who said it. Because Jesus Christ said that you will be here to see the Antichrist revealed. Then, he said, then I'm coming to get my people, okay? I will gather them up. Then you will possess the kingdom. My people will possess God's kingdom. Then, not before. So don't be misled. Stop being confused. Before you want to argue back with me, which means nothing, because um, it's from the mouth of Jesus Christ. Go read it for yourself. Research it. Study it. Look it all up back and forth. Flip it back and forth. All right. God bless y'all. Ask Jesus to be your savior.